Hi there. As you know by now, I'm Stuart Chamberlain, president of Chamberlain Financial in Boca Raton, Florida. Now comes the moment you've been waiting for in our video series. It's the time that you will be able to learn a bit about this so-called universe of non-stock market income generating investment options. There are three basic categories of investments, conservative, moderate, and aggressive. On the aggressive side are things that one invests in for growth. These include common stock, stock mutual funds, speculative real estate, and commodities. However, as we've said continuously, sometimes you invest for growth and you get shrinkage instead. On the left are vehicles that, in theory, are considered to have no default risk. These are things such as bank CDs, government bonds, fixed annuities, and insured municipal bonds. In the middle are investments that have some default risk but are considered to have a much lower risk of loss than things on the right in the aggressive category. In the middle are non-insured municipal bonds, corporate bonds, indexed annuities, preferred stock, and real estate investment trusts or REITs. The investments to the left and in the middle have two things in common. First, they're both considered to some degree to have less risk of loss than things on the right. Second, investments on the left and in the middle are what you invest in for income. They're not vehicles people invest in for growth because sometimes growth can turn into shrinkage. The interest and dividends that are typically yielded by the vehicles on the left and the middle represent a way for you to grow your money organically through the reinvestment of interest and dividends. If you're investing in things on the left and the middle, it can seem quite complex for someone who doesn't have a lot of experience in that area. If most of your involvement has been investing in the stock market for mutual funds, then I would strongly advise that you don't try this at home. With that in mind, I will share some of the factors that you need to consider when investing in the vehicles on the left and in the middle. If after watching this video, you feel that you would like more details, I would be willing to make time in my schedule to meet with you and provide additional information on each of the investment alternatives. You can also visit our website, chamberlainfinancial.com, to view our other financial education videos. Now let's move forward. Before I jump right in, you may have noticed that there's one tool conspicuously missing from the list, bond mutual funds. Let me explain why. In general, advisors that specialize in income producing instruments as compared to the stock market and growth oriented instruments tend to specialize in individual bonds and bond like instruments instead of bond funds. Many people aren't aware of it, but bond funds can carry many potential risks that aren't inherent in individual bonds. Simply put, a loss that would have been only a temporary paper loss in individual bonds can turn out to be an actual monetary loss in bond funds. So why do many financial advisors utilize bond funds instead of individual bonds? Perhaps it's because the majority of financial advisors today specialize in growth-oriented stock market-based strategies. The reality is that the analysis of stocks or stock mutual funds is much different from the analysis of fixed income. Most advisors who specialize in the stock market are often not very proficient in fixed income analysis. Therefore, it's easier for them to recommend a bond mutual fund than a portfolio of individual bonds. By recommending the bond mutual fund, he is leaning on the fund manager to pick the individual bonds. In a way, we can think of bond funds as a simpler way for stock market oriented advisors to invest in the bond market. However, like most things in life, simplicity comes at a cost. For example, I don't want to have to mow my own lawn at my home. I want simplicity. But in order to get that, I have to pay someone to mow my lawn. In this case, the cost of your advisor taking the simpler route and using bond mutual funds to invest in the bond market is that you're taking significantly more risk compared to having a properly managed portfolio of individual bonds. It's important to understand that if you are investing in the different categories of individual bonds or even preferred stocks, there are many variables to consider. First is the creditworthiness of the issuer. 
the higher the issuer's credit rating, the less interest or dividend that gets paid, and the lower the credit rating, the higher the interest or dividend that gets paid. In the case of municipal bonds, you also need to understand how your marginal tax bracket has an effect on your decision. The next choice one needs to make when investing in fixed income is the maturity date. You also want to look at the yield curve and see where you get the most bang for your buck. You need to look at the yields offered on various types of fixed income securities. There are at least four different types of interest rates that all mean different things. It's important to know about an individual security's coupon rate, current yield, yield to maturity, and yield to call, as well as whether or not it is callable or non-callable, convertible or non-convertible. By now, you're probably starting to see why I say that if you don't have any real-world experience in fixed income, you shouldn't try this at home alone. Additionally, you can see why many stock market-based advisors desire to simplify their practices by using bond mutual funds. At this point, some of you might be thinking, there is no way I want to buy bonds right now with interest rates so low. You are thinking as interest rates go back up again, bonds will drop in value and that concerns you. Well, that's probably because a lot of stock market-based advisors and Wall Street firms have been actively promoting that very message. The truth is that rhetoric is filled with many half-truths. Getting back to the list, let's talk briefly about annuities. You probably don't need me to tell you that annuities are extremely complicated. Some have embedded fees, and some have no fees at all. Some are subject to market volatility, and some have zero volatility risk. Some are irrevocable, and others are more flexible. There are so many factors to consider that unless you have real-world experience of the various types of annuities, do not make use of this investment tool without the help of a qualified financial professional. As for REITs, real estate investment trusts, there are also many choices. When choosing REITs, one needs to look at the type of real estate that the REIT is invested in, the average length of the leases within the REIT, the profile of the major tenants, and many other factors. REITs are every bit as varied and complex in their own way as annuities. So again, don't try this at home. It shouldn't surprise you that looking into a new world of investments can seem a little bit complicated at first. The analysis of stocks and mutual funds probably seem complicated at the beginning as well. A good financial advisor who specializes in the world of income generating securities will take the time to walk you through an educational process to help you understand the pros and cons of these different investment categories, including their risk and expected returns. If you're like most of our clients, at that point, you'd probably be able to give us some well-informed feedback in the terms of which categories you like and which categories you don't like. Only then can we start to put together a portfolio or recommend a combination of those categories which you say you prefer. The first step, however, is to give our office a call for free, no obligation consultation. At the end of the day, when choosing a financial advisor, the single most important factor is that you feel comfortable with that advisor's philosophies and their philosophies match yours when it comes to investing. Once you take that step and decide that we are the right firm for you, we can go ahead and roll up our sleeves and help you to determine if any of Wall Street's cancer exists in your portfolio. We want to help you govern how much of your hard-earned savings you want to have in the stock market right now, if any. Once we do that, we can bring you through the educational process and teach you about the universe of income generating options, the pros and cons, and how they work. I hope you've learned a lot from this video series, and I hope that it's helped you change how you think about money for the better. You have a distinct advantage right now in that you know me and my philosophies and in the fact that you know what I look like and what I sound like. I would like the opportunity to meet with you personally and to learn about your investment philosophies just as you have with me. That's why I'm offering you a no cost, no obligation opportunity to meet with me one on one to determine if this Wall Street cancer exists in your portfolio and how to show you what you can do about it. 
So please give me a call or send me an email and we can set up a meeting at a time that's convenient for you. I look forward to meeting with you. Thank you. <music>